Good morning. In this session, we will continue our discussion on our special transformations. In the last session, we have discussed about the mapping between different frames and the universal transformation, which is known as homogeneous transform. So, in this session, we will revisit the homogeneous transformation and again we will discuss further that how to use homogeneous transforms as operators what are compound transformations and how to invert the homogeneous transform first of all regarding the homogeneous transform which is given like this equation where ATB represents a 4 by 4 matrix which is used to represent both rotation as well as translation of any general frame with respect to the universal frame so in other words this homogeneous transform can be used to specify the complete description of any general frame. The four different components of uh, the homogeneous transform are given like this way, where this whole matrix is 4 by 4, so this is a 4 cross 1 vector, and finally this is a 4 cross 1 vector. So this vector PB is a vector defined in frame B having dimension 3 cross 1, and we are interested in finding its the description in frame A, this PA which is a 3 cos 1 vector, first of all regarding this matrix which represents the rotation matrix which is a 3 cross 3 matrix and it represents the orientation of frame B with respect to frame A. Next we are having the translation. This the translation is being represented with the help of uh, this vector APB origin which is a 3 cross 1 vector and it represents the distance of the origin of frame B with respect to frame A. Next comes the row vector which is a 1 cross 3 vector which represents perspective transformation. This perspective transformation is typically being used in uh, courses like uh, computer graphics and finally we are having a scalar W having dimension 1 cross 1 and it is called a uh, scaling factor which is again used in computer graphics to zoom in zoom out as a scaling factor. However from the robotics point of view the last two is typically taken as 0 0 0 and 1. Next we are going to discuss the homogeneous transform as different types of operators where only one frame is involved. First of all the translational operators. So let's say we are having a frame A in which the point P1 is being defined and we want to translate this point P1 by amount QA so that the final point is over here after the translation this is the final point and the final resultant vector is shown by point P2. So as all the points are described with reference to frame A, a simple vector addition is possible, but we are interested in representing this as an operator where we can operate a matrix on a point which should give us the desired transformation. So this 4 by 4 matrix is written as PQ where which means that it is a translation along the vector Q and this Q represents the magnitude which is shown like QX square plus QY square plus QZ square under the root and we can write this the TQ matrix like this way where the point P1 on which this TQ should operate is a 3 cross 1 vector and I3 represents the rotation matrix as both the frame A and frame B. Let's assume that there is a frame B here and this frame B is being translated by an amount QA. So as both the frames have the same orientation so the rotation matrix is I3 and the origin of frame B with respect to frame A is shown by QA. So finally we can write 
upon 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, and the last row is triple 0, 1, and QA is QX, QY, QZ, and P1, the vector is P1X, P1Y, P1Z, and this is 1. So this 4 by 4 matrix represents the homogeneous transform as a translational operator. Next comes the rotational operator, where the origin between the two different frames will remain coincident, but the orientation between the frames will change. So let's say we are again having a frame A, which is having xa, ya and za as the three axis and we are having a point p1 described in frame a now we want to rotate this point by angle theta which is 45 degree in this case in the counter clockwise direction so this kind of rotation can be represented again with the help of uh, this 4 by 4 transformation matrix which can be represented by pk theta where k is the vector about which a rotation takes place and theta is the amount of rotation so here we can see that the rotation takes place along the z-axis and amount of rotation is 45 degrees and this transformation matrix operates on point P1 to give us the point P2. So we can see this in the homogeneous transform wave where the translation vector is shown as 0 because both the frames remain coincident and the rotation matrix which shows the orientation of frame B with respect to frame A is shown by this rotation matrix which represents the rotation about z axis by 45 degree which we can write like this way that it is c45 minus s45 0 s45 c45 0 0 0 1 this is a typical template of the rotation matrix about the z axis and then finally all zeros and 0, 0, 0, 1 and here you have px1, py1, pz1, 1. So this 4 by 4 matrix represents the homogeneous transform as the rotational operator. Next comes the compound transformations where we can combine multiple transformations and represent as a one single transformation. So let's consider a frame A and there is a frame B and the origin of the frame B is represented by this vector and finally there is a frame C which is defined with respect to frame B with the help of uh, this vector which shows the origin of C with respect to frame B. Let's consider a point here which is represented with respect to frame C and is marked as PC. Now we want to describe this point PC with respect to frame A. First of all, we will describe this point with respect to frame B and eventually with respect to frame A. The point C using this transformation matrix TBC can be represented with respect to frame B like this way and this is the final vector and the vector PB can be represented in frame A with the help of transformation matrix ATB and the vector PA is shown like this way. So this is the final vector PA. Using this equation we can plug in the value of uh, PB from equation number 1 and we can write PA equal to ATB into BTC and the final vector C. So basically here you can see by using this two matrices you can map the point described in frame C to frame A. And it can be done using a one single transformation which represents the mapping from frame C to frame A, so like ATC. So eventually we can say that ATC matrix is equal to ATB into BTC. So you can see the subscript and superscript should cancel out which should give us the final transformation matrix from frame C to frame A. And the final transformation matrix can be represented if we write both the transformation matrix in expanded form. So this is the 
first transformation matrix ATB and this is the expanded form of BTC. If we multiply these two, we can get the expression for ATC like this. In the similar way, we can calculate the compound transformation between multiple frames. And this concept will be very helpful when we are going to calculate the forward kinematics of a serial manipulator having many degrees of freedom. Next comes the inverse homogeneous transform. The inverse homogeneous transform means that if we already know the original homogeneous transform, that is the transformation of frame B with respect to frame A, now we are interested in finding out the description of frame A with respect to frame B. So, this is the inverse transform which shows the transformation from frame A to frame B which is the inverse of the original transformation matrix. So, let's say we have two frames x a y a z a this is a frame A universal frame and this is x b y b z b this is the frame B and we already have the description of frame B with respect to frame A. So, using this P B origin with respect to A description and we can write this the original transform in expanded form like this way. Now, there are two ways to calculate this uh, inverse transform. One way is we can directly take the inverse of this 4 by 4 transformation matrix, but the taking the inverse of a 4 by 4 matrix is computationally expensive. Alternatively, what we can do is we can exploit the structure of uh, the original transform and calculate the inverse in a efficient manner. Now, to calculate the inverse, we need to know the rotation matrix which shows the orientation of frame A with respect to frame B and also this vector which describes the origin of frame A with respect to frame B. So, as we know that the rotation matrix is orthogonal in nature, so we can write the new rotation matrix as the inverse of the original rotation matrix and eventually it can be written as the transpose of the original rotation matrix and the description of this vector this can be shown like this way so the original vector is like this way in this direction now we will take the vector in this reverse direction because this vector will show the origin of a with respect to the frame B. So, this can be clearly seen that this is a negative vector of the original vector. But now, this the original vector was defined with respect to frame A, but the new vector must be defined with respect to frame B. So, we have to pre multiply it with this matrix so that the final description can be in frame B. So, we can now plug in these values. So, these two values we have already calculated. We can plug in these values and calculate the inverse using the information we already have from the original transform. Let's take one example on the inverse transform. We will revisit the same example again where we know that this is known to us that is the description of frame B with respect to frame A. But we are interested in finding out its inverse. Let's write this uh, known data. 0 0.71 minus 0 0.710, 0 0.71, 0 0.710, 0 0.001 and we know that the origin of a B with respect to A can be written like this way. We go minus 1 in the x direction and 1 in the y direction. So, it can be written as minus 1, 1 and 0. So, this is the original transformation matrix which is known to us a priori. Now, we want to calculate its inverse. The inverse matrix is given like this way. So, first of all, let us try to calculate uh, this uh, translational part which shows the description of uh, frame A with respect to frame B and it can be written as minus of. So, this term is basically 1 by under root 2. So, we can write it like this way. So, it is a transpose 1 by under root 2, 1 by root 2, 0 minus 1 by root 2, 1 by root 2, 0, 0, 0, 1 and the PB origin 
which is equal to minus one one zero. If we multiply these two quantities, so minus is still common. So we can see minus one by root two plus one by root two, and then the next is one by root two plus one by root two, and the third one is uh, zero. So here you can see this will cancel out. So it is zero. So this is one by root two. One by root two is two by root two becomes root two. So that is minus root two. And finally, you have zero. So finally, we can write the inverse matrix like this way: one by root two, one by root two, zero, minus one by root two, one by root two, zero, 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 one, and this is equal to zero minus root two, zero. Finally, we have one. Now let's try to calculate this inverse in an alternate way, which is called as a quick inverse transform. So let's assume that the transformation t is given to us, which is written as the four by four matrix having these four components. Now we can write this transformation matrix in two decoupled matrices, where the first matrix represents the translational part, and the second matrix represents the rotational part. So again, we have to be careful that on any vector, so let's say there is any vector on which it has to apply, the first rotation matrix will be applied followed by the translation. So that is the crux of a homogeneous transform, which is the rotation followed by translation. So we can write this matrix D like this way: one zero 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 one zero 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 one, and the last row is. Equal zero one, and here all these three components will come, which is equal to R one four, R two four, R three four. So this is the matrix representation of only translational part, and the matrix representation of the rotational part, which shows only the rotation part, which means last row is zero, and the last column is also zero. And here comes the rotation matrix R one one, R one two, R one three, R two one, R two two, R two three, R three one, R three two, and R three three. So now to calculate the inverse, we know T inverse, which is equal to D R inverse. And we know the inverse of two matrices is equal to R inverse D inverse. And as we know that rotation matrix is orthogonal, so R inverse is equal to R transpose D inverse. So from this matrix D, we can calculate the D inverse like this way: one zero 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 one zero 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 one, and the final matrix is zero 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 one. And these entries are minus R one four minus R two four minus R three four. So finally, we have T inverse as R transpose D inverse. R transpose can be written as R one one R two one R three one R one two R two two R three two and R one three R two three. R three three, and then the last row is triple zero one, and the last column is triple zero, followed by the D inverse matrix. And if we multiply these two matrices, this can be written as, and the last column can be written as minus R one one R one four minus R two one R two four. Minus R three one, R three four. Minus R one two, R one four. Minus R two two, R two four. Minus R three two, R three four. And the last entry is minus R one three, R one four. Minus R two three, R two four. Minus R three three, R three four. And we can verify that this matrix is equal to the original inverse matrix, that is R transpose 
minus R transpose P B origin and triple zero one. So this is the alternate way to calculate the inverse of the homogeneous transform. Finally, let's take an example where there is a manipulator which is supposed to reach for a volt, and the description can be shown in this figure. Here you can see there is a manipulator and there is a bolt which is lying on this uh, table. So we have defined multiple frames in order to make the proper transformation. So the first frame is called as the base frame which is the fixed frame attached to the robot base. The next frame is called as the tool frame which is defined at the end effector of the robot. This is a tool frame. Then we have frame S which is defined at one corner of the table on which the bolt is lying. And finally we have the G frame which is called as a goal frame which is attached to the bolt. So basically we want to describe the representation of a frame G with respect to the frame T. What is known to us? So first of all we know the end effector with respect to base that is we know the transformation T with respect to frame B. We also know the station frame with respect to the base frame which means this transformation and finally we also know the transformation of the bolt with respect to the corner of the table which means the transformation G with respect to frame S. So all these three transformations are known to us and we are interested in finding out the transformation of this bolt with respect to the end effector that is TG with respect to frame T and which can be written as G with respect to S and S with respect to B and B with respect to T. So here you can see this B will cancel with this B, this S will cancel with this S and finally we have the required transformation. But however so these two transformations are known to us but this transformation is not known to us, its inverse is known to us. So we can use the inverse transformation using the concept discussed in the last slide and we can get the final transformation matrix like this way as a compound transformation matrix which will give the description of the bolt with respect to the end effector of the robotic manifold. Next there are a couple of questions which you can try. Thank you.